Hi everybody, it's Dave Gray. Thank you for visiting me at DG Oil Cleaning Techniques. Today we are going to do a color study. Um, I'm working from a photograph again. And sometimes your photo just doesn't give you a lot of great information. And so what I advocate in a lot of instances is doing a color study. Um, what I'm going to do, what I'm doing right now is I'm just drawing a little map for myself of my subject um, and we're going to apply different colors to these different uh, shapes and see what the relationships look like. Uh, when you're doing a color study like this, it's not that important that your drawing is, you know, all that great. Um, it's more important that you are concentrating on what the color relationships are doing and what they will do in your piece. So hang with me and you'll uh, understand maybe a little bit better in a second what I'm up to here. It's important to do these small. Um, and by the way, I'm working on um, this canvas paper from Canson. And it's just a nice, you know, budget system. I've toned it with some raw umber, wiped it down, so it's, you know, it's just a tone. There's not any of it coming off. It's not wet. It's nice and dry. I just did it a second ago, so it just kind of soaks in and, and um, you know, it doesn't get, doesn't mess up your drawing. So here's my photo. Uh, not bad, you know. It's, it's got a pretty decent. Uh, light and dark pattern there and uh, the colors aren't so bad um, but you know the lights are a little bit washed out and I, I just don't want to match colors verbatim here uh, it's just not going to look like a very exciting painting if I do so uh, let's keep working on that color study and see if we can come up with something a little more visually exciting okay when you do this you're going to Really load your brush up. We're going to be painting really blocky. And at this point, I don't have a very definite plan of where I want to go. So while you're watching this, I'm sort of thinking, well, what exactly do I want to do? So we'll just kind of work together here and see what we come up with. Uh, this is just straight raw umber right now. see that canvas papers taking it real nice okay so when I'm doing a color study like this you know what I'm really concerned about is my shadow colors versus the colors in the lights on the skin tones and I want them to look you know, some people have said, so, so you try to get the colors accurate, and I'm like, well, no, I'm not looking for accuracy. I'm not looking to duplicate, you know, accuracy. What I mean is, 
I'm not really trying to duplicate the same colors in nature necessarily. What I want is a convincing, sort of exciting painting. Now, I am a naturalist. I, I'm, I'm not an impressionist. I have more of a naturalistic approach to color. But still, I want the colors to work well together and be sort of exciting is kind of the word I keep coming back to here. Um, I want them to vibrate against each other in a way that is, you know, interesting. Not tricky, not, you know, ooh, that's really... You know, I, I still have a very utilitarian view of, of how I approach color. Um, definitely more of a drafts person than I am a colorist. So, and I know I've had tons of questions about, you know, what exactly, you know, what are the colors you use? And I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, let me just lay these on. So it's kind of like paint by number here. We've, we've blocked out our, uh, our shadow, shadows. And now we're filling them in. So as you're doing this, you can just continue to evaluate, you know, how does that look? Um, I'm starting with this area. I've got to come up with a name. I'm sure there's a name for this. But from ear to ear, this kind of area that I tend to to go a little more chromatic or a little more pure in the color. So we'll put that in, let's see. And then above that, we'll go a little less chromatic and below that we'll go a little less
Okay, I want to show you my palette and how when I mixed, um, I didn't mix everything together. So every time I started a new tone, I mixed another pile. So now I can go back and look at all the colors I mixed. Excuse me. And I can make large piles of these mixes to help me save time when I do the painting. Now, normally I like to mix on the fly, but um, I think if you're still learning how to mix colors, uh, it may save you some time now that you've got some choices made, uh, and hopefully you've taken notes about what colors you've actually used. Now you can mix piles of these colors and use them as a secondary palette. You can uh, have your, your normal palette up here. You can put your secondary palette or your mixes down here. And then you've got, you know, you're, you're way on track in terms of where you want to go with the colors you want to use. And I definitely learned something. Uh, I need to do this a lot more often.